Hey everybody, welcome back to my gym. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Steel Reaper deadlift barbell from Bear Steel Equipment. I'm gonna start by comparing the specifications laid out on the Bear Steel website with what I have in front of me right here. Then I'm going to give you my opinions on the finish, the neural, the quality of construction, and some comparisons, as well as my final thoughts. As is usual, down below on the timeline bar, you can fast forward to parts that matter more to you uh, by clicking on the different chapters. The Steel Reaper Deadlift Bar is a newer offering from Bear Steel Equipment. It is a $375 deadlift barbell that when you build your cart and go to checkout, it comes at about $400 for me living in Ohio. That little bump up in price of just under $25 is the result of taxes and fees, and the shipping is included in the price of the barbell itself. When you read the description of the Steel Reaper barbell on the Bear Steel website, it describes it as an aggressively knurled, whippy bar. The specifications include a 27 millimeter shaft diameter, 1500 pound load capacity, 200,000 pounds of tensile strength, a 20 kilogram or 44 pound weight, as well as a 90.55 inch total length from end to end. Now the barbell that I have in front of me is actually very close on all of those specifications. So when I measured the shaft diameter, the shaft diameter came at very much like just under 27 millimeters with slightly over 27 millimeters where the knurling is, which is normal because the knurling, when they roll the knurling on, it actually does displace some material upwards, um, but still it's right at that 27 mils. It is 90.5 inches long. The one thing that was slightly different is that the 20 kilogram claimed weight, which comes out to about 44 pounds, was just a little bit under. So this bar here came in a little bit under that at 19.8 kilograms or 33 point like some fractions pounds. So 43.6 pounds is what it came out to. The website also claims a hard black chromium shaft finish, which led me to do some internet research. And from what I can tell based on my Googling, a hard black chromium finish is basically just describing a black chrome finish. And what I'll say is that the black chrome finish looks pretty good. And according to what I found online, it is incredibly resilient to oxidation, rust, and moderate levels of abuse. It definitely doesn't look like a cheap chrome coating, nor is it slick like a cheap chrome coating, but we're gonna cover finishes a little bit later in this video. Now the sleeves are a standard chrome finish and they look good and it's all evenly applied. Now the knurl is described as an aggressive knurl and that is a accurate description of this barbell. Um, this barbell is very pleasantly aggressively knurled. I would say that it's not overly aggressive, but it's very grabby. It's aggressive enough that it can actually shape down some calluses, but not so aggressive that you're actually going to be uncomfortable when you hold it in your hands with heavy weight, which obviously is very important because it is a deadlift bar and you're going to be lifting probably your best lift on this bar. Now the overall quality, like everything considered, is actually pretty outstanding and I'm gonna tell you why. First thing I wanna talk about is the actual hard black chromium finish. Now this hard black chromium finish is very evenly applied you can see a little bit on the shaft um, where it looks like it's almost like that bare steel kind of look. However, it does have that coating on it. Now, I can't really talk for the long-term resilience of this. Uh, if you're like in a salt water area or something like that, like I just, I live in Ohio, it's the middle of winter, it's pretty dry right now. Um, so I can't give you a real long-term how is the finish over time on that regard. I also can't speak to whether or not it's going to fade, kind of like a black zinc finish would fade. But what I can tell you is that it doesn't look like a bad coating and it definitely doesn't look like a zinc coating. It is very different and it is very evenly applied into the knurling. The whole thing looks very well done. That finish also extends slightly into the sleeves, almost all the way to the end, which is of course ideal because most people are not going to take these sleeves apart. And when I did take these sleeves apart, I did find that the bar was a little dirty, which is to be expected. However, it wasn't oxidized at all, which would normally tell you whether or not this thing's been basically like sitting in a sea land container, uh, in the water or something. Um, so very good condition, very good finish. I very much so like 
this finish as well because it's not slippery. What we have with a lot of like the zinc finishes, and again, this is just Curtis's opinion here, is that zinc finishes, chrome finishes, they tend to be a little bit more on the slippery side. This finish right here, if you're one of those people that like you just don't use chalk, this finish is going to be really friendly to you. And if you do use chalk, it only gets better with this. Moving on to the sleeves, the sleeves do have a nice and thick collar portion, which is a big key ID feature of deadlift bars. And the reason that deadlift bars have this super wide collar here is so that we can push the weight as far out to the sides as we can while still having loadable sleeve. What that does is it allows the 27 millimeter bar to actually whip a lot more than it would with a standard powerlifting bar that uses a thin collar over here. The one thing that I do wish that this sleeve had was slightly more loadable sleeve length, coming in at 14 and three quarter inches of usable sleeve length, meaning where the plates can actually be put on. It's one of the lowest, if not the lowest, amount of space on the end of a deadlift barbell that I've ever reviewed. Now, one thing that is really good about their sleeve construction though, is that one, the tolerance going back and forth is almost non-existent. What's been really cool about that is a lot of this slop is what makes barbells noisy. You can probably not even see in the video, like it's moving maybe one millimeter in and out when I try to extend this out. And that's all because they have the spacing really dialed in as far as in that end cap and in all the internals with the spacer rings. And I really like that personally. What I also love is that instead of a standard snap ring construction, this actually uses an end cap that threads in. So the way that this works is when you take it apart, you would unthread the end cap. It again, just turns. Um, just as a note, I did remove my Steel Reaper logo and after I uh, got the Steel Reaper logo off, I stuck my pliers in there because my spanner wrench is the wrong size, and I noticed that it basically spun freely. So if you're one of those people that takes your barbell apart, try to just twist it first. Don't be like me. But once you untwist it, what you find is that that end cap is threaded in and it sits up flush against a snap ring that's inside of there. Now that snap ring is just there to hold that end cap in place so that it doesn't go too far in. Once you remove the end cap and the snap ring, it's just a matter of taking off the internal snap ring, removing your spacers, and your barbell sleeve will slide right off. Now, inside of the sleeve itself, it was a little bit dirty, and so when I took it apart, I did clean the inside of it just to make sure that there wasn't any like steel burrs or anything like that in there. But overall, that's been a pretty common thing when you strip a barbell down for the first time, and that's because where they make these is in an industrial area where they're applying grease and they're putting things, they're machining items. So the big thing there is that there was no uh, burrs, no steel, no issues, no little metal cutoffs inside of that sleeve that would potentially catch on those bushings and basically make them not work like they're supposed to. The other amazing part about that snap ring construction though is again, so because it is a thread in end cap instead of a snap ring end cap, this barbell is like a stealth fighter in the gym. It is super quiet. Most of the time that you drop a bar and you get kind of that rattling noise, nine times out of 10, it's almost exclusively the end cap and the slop in the sleeve. Because this has almost no slop in the sleeve and because it has a screw in style end cap, there's nothing to really rattle. So at the end of the day, what you end up with is a really quiet barbell with really good tolerances that still provides good spin using dual bronze bushings that are inside of those sleeve. And there are two of those per sleeve. Now, when it comes to the overall performance of this barbell, I would describe it as something that is punching way above its price tag. If I was to place all the deadlift bars that I've used over the span of my lifting career, I would place this one somewhere in between the Texas Power Bar Whip and the Whip from a Kabuki PR deadlift bar. Now, a lot of that when it comes to the Kabuki bar has to do with the total length. Now the Kabuki barbell is 95 inches long, five inches longer than this. Not only that, but it's five inches longer and these collars are significantly wider on the Kabuki bar as well. That's what gives the Kabuki bar that very enhanced whippy feel that we see when we see people like Dan Grigsby pulling over a thousand pounds. 
Now, when we compare it to the Texas Power Bar, we actually find that it is two inches shorter than the Texas Power Bar, but there's just something about the way that this thing is set up where I think it feels just a little bit more whippy than the Texas Power Bar. Now, mind you, I really can't quantify that. That's purely based off of feeling, but this thing feels very professional. It feels very good. Now, I am currently trying to develop a way to quantify whip in a bar, but until I can actually get that finalized and get it so it's giving us repeatable numbers on the same barbells, um, you're just gonna have to go with my gut reaction on this. Now, Neural is very important in the lifting community, and that's because it provides a lot of feedback to the lifter. And this Neural is definitely not disappointing. Kind of at that peak of feedback and grippiness, but also kind of like the edge of comfortability. So it is sharp, so it is a very nice, sharp Neural, but it's not so sharp that when you're deadlifting 400 pounds that you pull your hand off and you feel like your hands are gonna be bleeding. When you're just grabbing the bar like I am here and I'm gripping hard here and I pull my hand off, you do get a nice and very clean imprint of that Neural pattern on your hand, which can happen with a lot of barbells, but this one's very deep, very nice, when I compare it to other deadlift bars that I've used, what I would say is it's somewhere in my top two. And I really have a hard time, like my top two to three, I have a hard time saying like which one is my favorite. Um, those top two or three are going to be the Texas deadlift bar, uh, this deadlift bar is for sure, and then like the Kabuki's in there as well. So like I have a top three, this is in that top three. I have a difficult time uh, telling you which one I love the most, but what I can tell you is that I really, really love the knurling on this, and I think they did a fantastic job. All right, so we've covered the construction quality. I've talked to you guys about finish, knurl. I've talked to you about the sleeve construction with that uh, thread and end cap. Um, now I wanna compare it, and we're gonna compare it to four other barbells, and this is gonna be pretty quick. The first two barbells I'm gonna compare it to are import bars. Now, one of those bars, which is the Crandall Pro Deadlift Bar, I have used and I have reviewed on this channel. This bar is better than the Pro Deadlift Bar on almost every single front. The only thing that the Pro Deadlift Bar from Crandall Fitness has over the Steel Reaper Bar is that it, it comes in a uh, camouflage pattern, but that camouflage pattern comes at a cost because that paint, uh, basically for each color, there's like a layer of paint on there, um, Cerakote on there, but it makes it so that the finish is so thick that you lose a lot of that knurl. However, the end cap construction is really similar. The whip is fairly similar and the dimensions are about the same size. There actually is a good chance that they come from the same importer. Um, I don't know which importer they're using, uh, but I do like the Steel Reaper a lot more and I think it performs a little bit better, mainly just because the Neural is much better on the Steel Reaper. The Crandall Fitness Bar is also a little bit less expensive, so if you're looking to save a little bit of money, maybe that's one way to go, plus code KL10 or KL5 can save you some money over at Crandall Fitness. The next bar is the Rep Hades. Now the Rep Hades, I have touched it twice. I touched it last year at the Arnold in 2023, and at the 2023 Arnold, it probably was a little bit passive. I didn't think that it was overly passive, but apparently Rep got feedback from that event. And at Home Gym Con in April, uh, they had talked about how they're going to redo the Neural on the Rep Hades bar. Now, I'm really excited for Home Gym Con 2024 because I'll be having that Rep Hades bar in my hands, and I'm really excited to see what they've done with the Neural. Uh, but this thing does stack up pretty decently next to the rep bar. The price is about the same, so the rep fitness bar comes in at $394 shipped, which is less than the $400 price tag that I would pay with Ohio taxes on the Steel Reaper bar. But one thing that you need to remember is that if you're military, uh, or if you use coupon code KL10 at checkout, you can save yourself a little bit of money on a really good bar. And that actually brings it right back down to the same about cost as the rep bar. The next two bars I'm gonna to compare to are American Made bars, and the first one we're gonna talk about is the Texas Deadlift Bar. In my opinion, I don't think that the Texas Deadlift Bar whips quite as much as this bar. Now, I know that the Texas Deadlift Bar has this huge cult following, and I do think it's a quality bar, but I think that the sleeve construction using those roll pins is something that for me is a big detractor. I really am more of a fan of snap ring end cap construction. 
Plus, I think the Neural is much better on the Steel Reaper versus on the Texas Deadlift Bar. Now, the Texas Deadlift Bar is not a piece of junk bar. It is definitely a really good bar to have in your arsenal. But for me, I really just like the Steel Reaper a little bit more. The Texas Deadlift Bar using the same finish, okay? So like if you get it in bare steel, it's going to be less. But if you were to get it in a similar finish, which is a chrome style finish, it's going to come at 425 dollars and that's my price shipped to where i'm at in ohio so it's not too much more so if made in usa is something that's important to you or maybe you're competing in a federation and you know at that next comp you're going to be pulling on the texas deadlift bar then maybe that extra you know 30 40 50 bucks might be worth it for you but if you're just looking for a deadlift bar to have in the gym i really do think the steel reaper is a better quality bar at this point in time now, the second Made in USA bar I want to compare it to is the Kabuki PR deadlift bar. And the Kabuki PR deadlift bar is one that I really did enjoy pulling on. I was able to have it in the gym for a couple months when one of my buddies uh, was basically out and uh, didn't have his home gym up and going. And so I stored it here for him and basically got to pull on it. And I really do love it. I think it's a great deadlift bar. I really want to get one for the gym. Got to save up that coin. The reasons that I love the Kabuki one are because of the Neural. And for me, that's always been something I've had a positive experience with at Kabuki Strength. Now, I know in the Home Gym Discord, there's some people there that basically have talked about how Kabuki sucks, like everything's awful. I just haven't had bad luck, so I've never gotten a bad lot from Kabuki. And I have been making those purchases for years now, basically from about 2019 until now, that's when I've been at the level where I've been able to purchase Kabuki bars. So the Neural is what I really love about Kabuki. Um, and what I would describe it is, like if I was to compare the Neuraling between this and the Kabuki, I would say that the Kabuki bar is just a little bit grabby. I think they use smaller uh, teeth, so it's a little bit more teeth per inch. Still volcano style knurling, so you can still get that nice sharpness, but because you're getting more TPI, you're getting more surface area. Um, I am working on a project, hopefully, where we're able to kind of quantify neural as well, because right now we basically just rely on my opinion, other people's opinions. Uh, but the Kabuki bar, I do like more than this one. If I could have a Kabuki bar at the snap of a finger, I would. Uh, but it's also a lot more expensive. So something with a similar finish would be $591. That's shipped to me. Now that's a huge price tag and a big jump up. Um, but if you're going to be competing and you're gonna be using a Kabuki bar, maybe it's worth it to you. For most people, if you just wanna get a deadlift bar because they look like fun, which they are, then I think the Steel Reaper is probably a better option for most people. Now, of all the barbells that we just talked about, the Steel Reaper bar does have the shortest loadable sleeve length at 14 and three quarter inches. Most of the other sleeve lengths are right at about 15 and a quarter to 15 and a half. So this one's about a half inch to three quarter inches shorter per side than all of those bars. So overall, I found the Steel Reaper deadlift bar from Bear Steel Equipment is an outstanding bar for almost anyone's gym. It whips nicely and it is very quiet because of those screw in end caps. Now the price on the Steel Reaper bar is a little bit lower than most of the other options out there, especially when you consider the military discount or using code KL10 at checkout. Now I do wish this had a comparable sleeve length, but at the end of the day, we're talking about a half inch to three quarter inches less per side. So sort of important, sort of not important. I would say that if you're using high temp bumper plates or homegrown lifting or the Strength Co bumper plates, maybe it'll be a problem because those Crumb rubber or HG style bumper plates are a little bit wider, so you can run out of space sooner, uh, but we're not talking about all that much of a difference. Although the bar is an import bar, I would like to stress though that Bear Steel Equipment does most of their business inside of the USA, not to mention it is a small business owned by a teacher. Um, I personally, I love to learn about the companies and learn who the people are, and for me, Sean at Bear Steel is an absolutely awesome person who only wants the highest quality pieces of equipment going out there with his name on them. He has good ethics, good quality control, and really responsive customer service, and in my opinion, deserves a little bit of your look. Use the link down below to go check out 
the Steel Reaper bar, as well as all the other offerings from Bear Steel Equipment. That's been it for this review. I appreciate you watching. And remember, when it comes to building your home gym and buying your deadlift bar, you should always keep it better, awesome, and of course, badass. I'll see you next time.